Have you begun to put things in place for your dream? Have you honestly begun to put things in place for your dream? You have to ask yourself that question. If you believe that it is coming, the greatest evidence that you believe that something great is coming is your preparation. When we fail to prepare, we prepare to fail. Now we want to win. And to win, you must decide what you need to be doing right now. In order to win, you must decide what you need to be doing right now. I want you to underscore two words in that statement. Write down the word win. You want to win. You want to win. Win. I want to use that as an acronym. Win is what's important now what's important now. If you're going to win, you're going to have to do what's important now. Win. What's important now? Now, then then the other other word there, now. Now is needs over wants. Needs over wants. Needs over wants. That's why you don't want to be impulsive, but you want to be intentional. Not impulsive, but intentional. You see those nice shoes? Needs over wants wants needs over wants needs over wants pay your rent before you get your nails done <laughs> needs over wants needs over wants be intentional touch yourself right now say i'm living an intentional life you ought to be a designer i want you to be a custom designer you live your life by designer that this this is a designer life that this ought to be a designer you are unique God never made two of anything alike. He, 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 he loves designer stuff. You are custom made. You, you're a designer, tailor made, uniquely fashioned. Nobody else in the earth is made like you. Nobody. You, you're tailor made. You're, you're unique. You weren't just brought out of a warehouse, but a thousand other folk look just like you. You're unique. It's amazing. But you see, you need to ask yourself this reality question. Rudy, uh, Rudiger said that reality is the enemy of fantasy, but not of dreams. Reality is the enemy of fantasies, but not of dreams. Because you want your dream to happen in reality. So reality can't be an enemy, or else you'll be going to the, the place that you're going to set it up, that it's going to develop and be built, is in enemy land. So you need to ask yourself whether or not you are attempting a dream with factors within your control to achieve. And I, I'm not talking here about the God factor. I, I understand that when you're doing something that there are some elements that only God can do for you to open that up. I'm not talking about the God factor. I'm talking about, uh, you know, how uh, the, the reality, here's a reality check for you, that you cannot do any and everything that you imagine. You just can't. I mean, I, I can imagine myself just flapping my arms and flying where I need to go. But that doesn't mean that I can do that. Just, just with my arm. You know, I mean, man can fly, but we got to have a little help. We got to attach ourselves to some kind of apparatus. We can't just fan our arms real fast. And I don't care how long I would imagine myself doing that. I doubt very seriously whether I'm going to become airborne just, you know, because I had a vision, seeing myself you know, flapping and then lifting off the ground and like I'm being caught up in the rapture. <laughs> so we can't just do everything that we imagine. When the Bible talks about our being able, when it says, uh, Paul writing to the church at Philippi, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You have to understand that I can do all things through Christ that pertain to my calling, destiny, and purpose. If I'm not called, I, I'm born a man. I, I wasn't born a woman. So no matter how much I would admire a woman for being able to carry a baby through a gestational period and then get on the table and deliver, well, God knows I don't want to do that anyway. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, but if I did want to do it, and if I just confessed it, I can do all things. I mean, suppose I said, you know, my wife carried the first one. I said, I, I, I'm carrying the next one. I can do all things. No, 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 I can't do that. I can't do that. I wasn't, I wasn't born to do that. I, I wasn't, I don't have the equipment to do that. I, I wasn't, that's not, I wasn't purposed to do that. 
I can do all things through Christ that pertain to my purpose, calling, and destiny. Destiny. So I just can't just do any and everything that I, that I want to do. And, and here is, is uh, just a, f- a further proof of that is that I don't have time to do everything that I can imagine. You don't have time to do everything that you can imagine doing. You just, we, you, we, just, we, don't, we don't have time to do it because it would take a whole lot of time uh, to, to develop things. It, it, it would take uh, time to learn uh, different career paths and then be able to master those. We don't have that kind of time. And uh, secondly, you wouldn't have all of the connections. You wouldn't have all of the skills, all of the credentials, and the experience necessary to make it happen. We just don't have time to even get all of that. You have to ask yourself this reality question, can I make this happen? There's only going to be a handful of people every season that's going to get drafted into the NFL. Only a handful. Do you know how many thousands of young aspiring folks that have done nothing but played football almost all of their life, they prepared for that moment, and how many of them are going to have that burst in their face? Because there's only enough room. There are only so many tickets. And if there are only... 20 tickets and you got 20,000 applicants eager who've been dreaming about it, who've been practicing since they were five years old and they have no ability to make that happen no matter how much they practice because there are a lot of other good players and let the truth be told there are some better players that never got drafted than the ones who did. It's not going to happen for everybody. And sometimes you don't, no matter how good you are, you don't even have the power to make it happen. I'm not trying to be a dream burster here. I'm I'm trying to be a dealer in reality to help us to understand when we've got something that has actually come from God. You see, some dreams rely on sheer luck because there's only so much room on the platform for those super achievers. And you see, believing in a dream isn't enough. And even desperately wanting it isn't enough. The problem is, is that some dreams don't have a basis in reality. And if your dream depends a lot on luck, you're in trouble. If your dream depends a lot on luck, you are in trouble, serious trouble. The only luck that I believe in is L-U-C-K, which means labor under correct knowledge. You got to labor under correct knowledge. Now that's, and, and you'll find that the more that you labor under correct knowledge, the luckier you'll be. That's the kind of luck that the bishop believes in, laboring under correct knowledge. And when people's talent doesn't match their dream and they fail to recognize it, they will forever be working but never winning. You know some folks that's just been working on the same thing for so many years, and I know some people work on it for years and all of a sudden they have a lucky break and then they do make it. But there are a whole lot for everyone that does. I cannot tell you how many thousands go away bitter sometimes and sometimes still struggling, still trying it. But it's because the talent didn't match the dream and then they failed to recognize it and they kept on working but never winning. Ralph Waldo Emerson said that shallow men believe in luck, strong men believe in cause and effect. It's interesting. But dreams that have no basis in reality are called fantasies. They are called fantasies. And I want to show you a difference here between fantasizers and those who are dream builders. The fantasizers rely on luck. The dream builder relies on discipline. The fantasizer uh, he, he, uh, focuses on the destination. The dream builder focuses on the journey. Fantasizer, uh, they have healthy expectations. Dream builder creates a healthy discontent so they don't get complacent. The fantasizers minimize uh, the value of work. The dream builders, they maximize the work they do. The fantasizers look for excuses. Dream builders lead to action. Fantasizers create inertia, but dream builders generate momentum. The fantasizers breed isolation. Dream builders create teamwork. And fantasizers wait, but dream builders initiate. Fantasizers avoid personal risks but dream builders embrace risk as necessary. Fantasizers make others responsible, but dream builders are personally responsible. They take responsibility. 
I love something that John Wooten said, Coach John Wooten. He said, I welcome good luck just as anyone does, but I worked extremely hard to avoid being in a situation in which luck was necessary to produce a favorable outcome or where the luck of an adversary could defeat us. So you have to really work labor under the correct knowledge. And so the first step in aligning your dream and your talent is to build on your strength, build on your strength, and that takes time. It really takes time. I was just reading this today, just, just today. I just read this in the news today about some people who worked incredibly hard to succeed. I wrote this down just, uh, uh, just a few minutes before I came here. Uh, successful people in, in every field are often said to be blessed with talent or even just lucky. Now, this comes from the Business Insider uh, uh, magazine. Uh, but the truth is, is that many of them, they say, work harder than the average person can even imagine. It's not just their luck. It's a lot of hard work where they've rolled up their sleeve. So you have to be able to learn how to build on your strength because what that does, it activates the law of least effort. You tap into what's called the law of least effort. The law of least effort is about finding your true purpose and your true area of excellence. This law really works when you follow your own nature, what is natural to you. And if you know and you follow these things, it becomes a very, very easy way to live your life's purpose. And you have to ask yourself these questions. What comes easy to you but harder to others? What is it that comes easy to you but it comes hard to others? And you have to ask yourself this question. What would you want to work on for a long time even if you were never paid for it? Because that's something that honestly comes easy to you. And so you have to learn to play to your strengths. See, this wise woman, she perceived that her merchandise, she girds herself with strength and then she strengthens her arms. She's playing to her strengths. She's playing to her strengths. Play to your strengths. And then you'll find what's called your sweet spot. I love to see musicians who really know how to ad lib. We talked about improvisation. When you really know how to ad lib, I love to see them get into a groove where they find a sweet spot and just make it do what it do. <laughs> uh, you know, athletes can do that. You can get in a zone. You can be hot. We call it a sweet spot. And, and I mean, they want to keep on when, they, when they're like that. I know some folks, I've seen them out in Vegas. They're like, don't stop me now. I'm hot right now. I'm hot. <laughs> they done found their sweet spot. Well, see, that's a tricky one because it can get bitter on you just like that. So you really have to, you have to be careful. But when, when you're operating in your strengths, you, you'll, you'll, you'll frequently tap into what's called your sweet spot. It's, it's, and it's an incredible thing. But building on your strength, it also enables a consistency of results. It enables consistency of results when you build on your strength. You cannot achieve success without su consistency. You cannot achieve success without consistency. Do you think that you could go to a different Starbucks and all of them, and the coffee is different at every location you go to? And you think you're gonna build a successful thing? Because people say, I don't, I don't know about going over here because the food ain't good over there at this location. You gotta go to one over here. And you know, you gotta point to one on the, and you, you can't, you could, McDonald's could not have built a successful uh, franchise if, if you know, if you got to go to a special one downtown because they got good cooks at that one. No, 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 they have, they have systematized that thing so that it is consistent. And I, I mean, if you get a, a hamburger from McDonald's in Atlanta, it's going to taste like the same one in Kentucky. The same one in New York is going to taste like the same one in, in California. It's, there is a consistency. And that's why... Uh, they can put up the golden arches and will have instant clientele because of their consistency. Now, it could be Papa Joe's hamburgers, and they may be better than McDonald's, but nobody knows of the consistency of his food. And I've been in some restaurants, and the food is good when certain people are back there cooking. And you can tell when the real cook, when the regular cook is on vacation. And you can tell, you know, I've been in certain places and like, who made the tea today? 
Uh, that, that there has to be consistency that is connected with success. I mean, does that mean anything to you guys? You cannot achieve success without consistency. The difference between an amateur and a pro is consistency. The amateur can luck up and do it, but he can't do it again because he hasn't learned the technique. He, doesn't, he has not systematized it. He doesn't know how to do it consistently until he has learned the strategy. You've got to understand what you're doing. You see, a dream becomes a reality as a result of your actions, and your actions are controlled to a large extent by your habits. You know, psychologists estimate that up to 90% of people's behavior is habitual. Up to 90% of our behavior is habitual. Habitual. Most things are governed by routine. Aristotle said that we are what we repeatedly do. And he said, excellence then is not an act but a habit. So you have to cultivate the right habits and practice them regularly. Cultivate the right habits and then practice them regularly. Because bad habits never go away on their own. They just don't. Bad habits never go away on their own. If you're just waiting on a bad habit to go away on its own, you will be waiting a long, 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 long time. Put your hands together just like this and interlace your fingers. Put your hands together and interlace your fingers like that. Uh, you know, now, and, and you know when you, when you do it, now, now look at your thumbs. There's one of your thumbs is on top of the other one. And most people, whenever they interlace their hands, they will always put it together with the same thumb on top every time. It's a habit. It's a routine. Now, I want you to take them apart and put them together intentionally this time putting the other one on top. And it feels a little awkward, doesn't it? You see, because we're creatures of habit. And you don't even think about that. You don't even think about it because we're, we're so governed by habit that, that every time that we do it, 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 the same thumb will be on top every time. And if you intentionally switch it up and do the other, it, it feels awkward to it. Cross your arms, cross your arms. When you cross your arms, one of them is, is, is going to be on top of the other one. And that same arm is consistently on top of the other one. Now, if you uncross them and then redo it and put the other one on top, it feels awkward. You, you notice that? I mean, what's up with that? What's up with that? And I, I, I want you to take your hand like this and, and, and just, just give me one clap. Just clap. When you do that, when you do that, every time we consistently have one hand that does the clapping and the other one that does the receiving, same hand. Same hand. Now switch it up. Doesn't that feel awkward? What's up with that? Can you see how we are such incredible creatures of habit? You had no idea that you had a dominant hand that's always doing the striking and the same other hand all the time, always on the receiving end. Pow. Same arm is always on top. Same one always get on top, just consistently, consistently. And if you ever switch it up, it, it feels terribly uncomfortable to us. You know, most people... The limitations that they face are not on the outside, but only on the inside. And there are some things that when you get ready to try to change some things in your life, it's going to feel terribly awkward. It's going to feel awfully uncomfortable to you. It really will. So, so in life, listen, you can't change where you're starting from. You are where you are, and there's nothing you can do about that. All you can do is start where you are. Start where you are. But you can work hard to change where you will end up. You can't do anything about where you start. We're not, we, we're not, we can't control how we are born, but we do determine how we die. We have an ability to be able to work hard and change the way that we're going to end up in life. And so I want to ask you, what's your dream? What is your dream? What is your dream? Now listen, if you haven't already written your dream out, I want you to do it now. I mean, not, not right this moment, but within the, within the next week. Don't let another week come by without your having put your dream in writing. 
Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Join us again next time for Power for Living, where revelation is power, power for living.